resume recording the call so that anybody who's unable to join us will be able to join us. So happy Friday, happy weekend eve. Um, I've just to just to let you know at about quarter after or so we're hoping that Carla Tanis who's the founder of the Global Agropreneur Summit and Future Agro Challenge will be joining us from Greece. Um, so thank you for all being so wonderful and joining us just a little bit earlier than um, most were able to but um, let's see so uh, Jake is probably uh, I want to be mindful of your time since you have another call um, to give us an I don't update. Know who kind I of... am uh, who I am part two who is that? <laughs> That's you. I'm part two. It well, is. Well, I you're... didn't say it twice. I didn't know who that would be. Oh, that's not you? No. That's not you. Who's on the phone from the 312 area code? Sorry. I'm sorry, who? Sorry, who? I, I, can't, I can't hear. Sorry, my headset's not working. Frank Gruber? Oh, hi, Frank. I'm sorry. I was like, okay. Hi, Frank. Okay. okay, now we know everybody's accounted for. Okay, yeah. Jake, you want to give us an update boots on the ground of what's going on over there? Sure. So, um, then working with our civic center, all that's kind of squared away. They're holding the date for us with no. Uh, no restrictions or requirement for deposit or anything like that. Um, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, is our State of the City address, um, where the mayor will be officially announcing this. Um, and then we're working on, or I guess I'm working on a press kit right now as we speak, um, with a press release and graphics and all those types of things. So hopefully I can distribute that to the group um, Monday just to kind of look at, give some feedback so that we can have it ready to go on Tuesday. Um, and then I guess the exciting thing, I had a, a call yesterday with the uh, Illinois DCEO, which is our Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. Uh, their head of innovation and entrepreneurship We've built a pretty good relationship over the past couple of years. She used to work at, uh, actually used to work at 1871. Um, so she's very familiar with the scene, knows the stuff, um, but she was super excited about, about what's going on um, and has offered up potentially to have the governor uh, give some opening remarks at the event um, in April, and then the state's willing to participate in multiple ways. So helping us get, at least in Illinois, get the word out to uh, VC firms as well as the universities and, and companies across the state. Um, and potentially from a funding perspective too. So she did say that most of their fiscal year is already uh, spoken for from a budget standpoint, but they were gonna look and see if they could find some uh, some funding to help us with that. So, but they're very excited, um, you know, willing to offer up as much help as they can. They would plan on having a booth there at least um, and inviting inviting all the right people from the state, from the state side of things. So, so that was good. Um, so Tuesday's a big day. Um, and we'll be pushing out, like I said, pushing out information, um, probably doing a press event um, after the gov or after the mayor's um, discussion, uh, just from a local perspective. So, yeah, we're we're excited, and it seems, I guess, a little more official now. So, <laughs> um, we did also meet. I forgot to mention, we did also meet locally with um, our local resources, being um, our University of Illinois Extension, the uh, 4-H as well as um, our Convention and Visitors Bureau, our EDC, our city, um, just to get them all on board. So uh, they'll be willing to help too, just from a local perspective in terms of um, making sure it's a great event for, for everybody that attends. Uh, and then the University of Illinois Extension has also provided a lot of names uh, and spreadsheets for us for uh, university contacts across the state. So, so yeah, all things are going well on the ground. Um, Everybody kind of looks at me crazy when I say April, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm confident we can get it done and, um, and pull off a really good event. So considering that, um, that we'd have to get the word out wider since I think we're, we're only really thinking about 
doing one event this year, I think it, it would be a lot to take on to, to do too. It's not totally out of the question, but unless it really falls um, kind of gift wrapped on our lap, um, it's it would be a lot. Um, I, um, I want to introduce Carla, but I, I wanted to see um, Kelly how how things will line up with Village Capital and um, and the vision that Village Capital has for their sustainability stuff so that we can make sure that um, we get the information infused into the, um, the announcement that Jake is going to have happen on Tuesday. Uh, okay, yeah, so we will probably be, in April, we'll probably be launching our applications for our accelerator program that'll be focused on regenerative ag. Timing-wise, it's good because we'll, we'll launch the applications, like I said, we'll open them. They'll be open for about a month or two will be the, the selection process, and then we'll do our accelerator program in the summer, late summer, early fall, and hopefully wrap up all of our workshops before the global competition in Greece in October. Um, so, but that's a good question. I'll have to, I'll have to put some thought into whether we will be ready to make any type of formal announcements on Tuesday. Uh, we may have to do something a little more informal you know, uh, ver 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 verbiage wise, but uh, I'll have to think through that. It may, even if it's just, you know, Village Capital will be opening applications for an ag focused accelerator program, even if it's as simple as that. Yeah, I think that um, I'm, I, I'm not too um, concerned about having you formally announced as much as we want to make sure that the program that one of the focuses or at least the attention on um, uh, like the 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 lens in which you're you're doing your um, your program mm -hmm. is aligned with the kind of entrepreneurs that we're going to have. I mean, it it makes total sense that you know if you're looking at more high tech, high growth this cycle, or um, because yours is still like that that specific segment of, of where they're sitting on their seed round mm -hmm. but um, and and I'm sure we'll get people in that but we want to make sure that when we put the call out for people for submissions mm -hmm. that we'll be able to fit um, the right um, the right demographic for what you're looking for okay, um, yeah, so so that's a win-win so so whatever that um, the category is or or um, any of those things that you you know throw out some keywords and we'll make sure to incorporate it um, cool. yeah so that would be great okay easy yeah i can email that over i mean really it's just early stage pre-revenue is fine um okay and with the regenerative focus solutions uh sustainable farming practices great and so we'll um because not all the submissions that i saw how are necessarily pertained to farming practices. So if we're talking about farming practices, we want to call that out um, because um, as Carla will be able to tell you, the, 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 um, just the variety of people that submit to future agro challenges, vast and wide. So, yeah. um, so that's that. Um, and okay, so, <laughs> On the call with us is Carla Tennant. She is the founder of Future Agro Challenge and the Global Agropreneur Summit. Um, and my friend for, in Greece, we've, um, and so I want to just introduce her and then, um, and then this is a good opportunity to ask any questions. Um, and we've started, Jake started a sheet. Oh, Kelly, if you'll put that information on like just a sheet and then throw it in the Google Docs um, in that folder, that would be great. So everything is um, added. All right, Carla, you're on. Thank you, everyone. First and foremost, sorry for I'm a little bit all messy here. It's late afternoon on Friday. I'm supposed to be with my kids and, I, you know, young kids. So I came back from work, changed everything. And here I am just quickly hopping in. So I'm going to try to keep this as tight as possible to get back to them because I've closed the door and they're screaming outside. <laughs> so, 
Um, oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> I yes, appreciate that. I understand. That. So if you hear me like going or getting up or my eyes are looking in a different direction, you know why. So as far as an introduction from me, I am the founder of Future Agro Challenge, as Cecilia mentioned. It started, ideally started from a need in Greece when everybody heard about the major crisis that was here. Um, we said, you know, we are a group of entrepreneurs ourselves. What can we do? How can we help the region progress with this whole brain drain? We ourselves were losing, you know, talent in our own organizations and we wanted to find ways to retain talent. So simply started by something on the sidelines, nothing that we ever thought would become a whole organization nor a global network. Um, we looked at the economic development and looked at different studies and said, you know, what can we help for this region per se? And one of the major industries in this region was agriculture, among the other four that we took a look at, which is tourism, creative industries, clean tech, and um, health. All five sectors as an organization, as industry disruptors, we are active in vertically, but in the food and agro is what we took on on a personal basis, I took as Carla, and had a global focus thereon. It didn't start global, but it started national. We started with a national competition and then got a lot of media attention around it when we started. And then from there, we started to grow into 30 countries with in two years and then we grew into 16 ever since we just keep growing um i was very pleased to have met cecilia um this is through the ecosystem building network that we've been we're both in through the gec and as an ecosystem builder myself and retaining a network and a global network you'll come to realize this is one of the reasons why we have a very vast variety of ideas is because when you deal with organ with the ecosystems from around the world especially in the food in the food chain you'll realize what happens in the ecosystems in africa is a lot different than what happens in the us and a lot different in latin america and every region and this is why we have to keep a very wide range of ideas and it's very hard to focus in um, the aim especially for us as we try to fix the food puzzle is bringing in all the global connectors. And that means that we can't do it alone without Africa, and we can't do it alone without the US, and we can't do it alone without Europe. This all has to come together to work together. So this is the whole viewpoint from here. Uh, we, we have grown from a simple, you know, we're still a small team, but we keep growing and bringing on more and more players, but it's all about partnerships, networks, collaborations, and it's, it's amazing to see what has been done since, ever since we started. So I'm happy to answer any of the questions that you have and feel free to get in touch with me if I don't answer now. Um, you could reach me by email or by phone, I'm easy access and accessible. Thanks a lot, Carla, for the intro. Um, so some of the questions, um, as, as uh, Jake started. So what I wanna encourage is anybody who has any questions about some of the things that, um, that around the logistics, around the organization, all of those things, um, Jake has started a document where we can add to the document, keep asking each other questions, and then it's not like these messaging back and forth and somebody comes back with, oh, and asking the same question over and over again. So um, so that document is shared in the Google Docs, um, which all of you should have access. If you don't, please let me know. And, um, and so one of the questions is, in the submission process, what we were going to do is point them to the Future Agro website and then um, have them submit so that they can um, they and what um, what you and and the people in Greece will do is is share that information with us as far as who submitted and all of that right um, can you um, give us some some ideas of the things that are asked in in that form Sure. Um, what I would we we look at the team. We I mean we look at the idea. We look at the team. We look at their achievement that they have done as a team and as people themselves. We look at their business model, where they stand today, and what their asks are for to you know why they're joining us. 
And we look at kind of their market research and how much they've understand the potential of their idea. So we really try to take a look as to where they stand today, their idea, and where they're going tomorrow. Um, we do keep it as simple as we can in the aim that it gives you know, room for people that's not very bureaucratic like many other processes are. Great, and, um, and Frank, so Frank who's on the call um, does Startup of the Year here in the United States. And, um, and Hi, so, Frank. so Hi, I, um, so I'm, I'm curious, well, I mean, you're the, you're the person that does all these national competitions, Frank, you've been doing yeah. this for a while. What is it that we're, we, we definitely need to keep top of mind? What are we um, not addressing? What do we need to, like, what's the, what's urgent? Um, I need to understand the exact, like, qualifications for the companies, and, and then it, it kind of could help guide, like, how long it's going to take to find companies to participate. And, uh, and then obviously our April is, is coming quick. Um, if that's, if that's the deadline, you know, you're going to have to get the deadline out in probably February ish, late February. So timing to get an application and get these companies in is, is crucial right now. And then, you know, figuring out if, you know, what is that, what does that qualification look like is, is kind of the most important part I'd say. And then, um, you know, I'd have to learn, hear more about it. I was curious when the actual competition is in October or fall. Did you say October? I, I, or make, did I make that up? The actual uh, global event. It's the first weekend of October. First weekend of October. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I think just, I, I haven't heard enough to kind of have any like red flags or anything like that. But I, I mean, I think the main thing is if we're going to have something in, in the Peoria right away, um, you know, April is right around the corner. So I think we need to get that application out pretty soon with details as to like what, what the actual, um, what did they get out of it as far as um, exposure and, and potential um, investment, all that kind of thing. And so, and then obviously going on to the, the global and it sounds like there's a tie in with, with uh, village capital too, potentially. And there could be a tie in with start of the year, depending upon the timing. Um, if it's, that's why I asked about the timing. We usually do something in October as well. And I wouldn't want to try to get them to go to Greece and then come to wherever we're doing our event, which we're still determining. So, um, but that's why I was wondering if those, those dates were out there. So the first weekend in, in October, you said. Yes. Is, J Jackie, are you on the call as well? I, I'm not no, on Jackie's computer. not on the call. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. But we'll record Thanks. it and we'll share it. Um, okay. So everybody will have access. I'll just drop it in the Slack channel um, when, when the recording comes up. So, and then yeah. I know that um, one of the things that, don't have to do specifically with the competition, but just so you're all aware of that there's discussion going on is, um, is I know that, and DJ will, will test to, um, USDA is very um, excited about youth participation. And we're, I don't know that we're necessarily going to have a youth vertical, but, um, but if it comes to, um, I, I think the, the real possibility is for Carla and myself and the State Department, the USDA, and a, a number of other entities to actually host a youth delegation to go over to Greece and participate in, um, in this, or, or at least um, meet all the, the entrepreneurs and the investors and, and uh, right. tour the farm school and stuff. That could be eye-opening and life-changing for some of those entrepreneurs. So, yeah, I think that's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Um, so, so that's something that, that we can work on. So what, um, Jake is really like the boots on the ground, what needs to happen in, um, in Peoria, right? So, so because it's his town and, um, and, you know, having, so, so we've got to talk about money because money needs to happen. And, and I want to make sure that DJ who is on the call is compensated. DJ, I have to ask you, um, and we can take this offline is, is um, the proposal. Thank you for sharing it, which we'll discuss, you know, is, um, is inclusive or exclusive of travel and whether or not that needs to. So that's something that, that I, I need to discuss with you, but just so it's top of mind and I don't forget to ask. Um, but, um, but Jake has put together a proposal 
And in the proposal is, um, is compensation for people that he would need to, um, to oversee uh, arrangements and make sure things get done. We could do this with a volunteer pool, but we all know how that works. And um, and we're all about making sure that we're all sustainable in the things that we do. On the other, um, just to, to think about that just a little bit, and I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Uh, excuse me. Um, thank you. <clears throat> so the other thing is, um, is there's, because it's our first pancake, there's not necessarily compensation for every single member of what's involved, which is why I asked you on the last call, what is a win for you? What do you need to get for your organization, your community, all those things? For Carla, I know predominantly we're going to need to send somebody over um, that's covered. So we have to raise enough money to cover the expenses of the winner to go over the global competition, right? That's a win for the entrepreneur and that's a win for um, future agro challenge to be able to have representation for the United States. I think some of that can be supported through sponsorship um, and we're gonna work on the government side to try to get that and, and look at large institutions and such. Um, while, while there's not enough I don't know. I mean, we may um, we may open this up and like all of a sudden people's purse strings may open up and we're all going to get compensated. But I can't promise you that. So when we first started this discussion, I said to all of you, um, maybe there's fame, maybe there's fortune, maybe it's a little of both. Maybe it's just a little bit, whatever. But um, but think about what what it is you need. Um, Jake is taking the biggest amount of risk because those contracts with the convention center um, being able to to compensate and all of that that really rests on his shoulders no pressure jake and um but you know i want to be fair to everybody involved so so if you would like to um message me email me call me text me um whatever and tell me um what what you what you see as the level of commitment and what you can um, what you're going to need to be involved in that and I think it's a very fair thing to say this is you know the minimum that I need to be involved and this is my goal and my wish and my goal and my wish is that we're all compensated financially as well as um, as well as getting back the the things that we need for our organizations and our, ourselves as individuals. Is that fair? Okay. So I don't know. Only yeah, the people I, are on camera, just saying. <laughs> um, real quick, I guess related to that, and thanks for kind of setting that up. Um, Carl, I didn't know if there existed any type of, um, this has been the list, list of questions, but just one I want to kind of talk about with everybody is a list of, um, or typical thing for sponsors, you know, hey, for the sponsorship level, you get, you know, this type of involvement, or even I see that, you know, for the, the global event, there's a ticket charge for just attendees, or maybe VCs have a different price, those types of things. So maybe just some of those financial modeling things um, around sponsorships and uh, attendees would be super helpful. You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> Regarding sponsorship, I could speak to you from the global side, but one of the things that was always difficult, and maybe hence if anyone here finds a solution for this, let us know, but sponsorship really differs around the world. I mean, what we may suggest as a financial model for you in the U.S. is completely different than what we could suggest for something in Africa or any other place. So in that being said, we usually don't get involved in the local financial scheme. That's something they do you know, depending on what you have on the market price, you know what you need for the market and how much you need to raise. Hence, if there's anything that we could support you on the global side, is it, do you need, you know, uh, discounted prices for your sponsors and what tiers? On that level, yes, we could start and send you different things that we could offer from the global side. Okay, that'd be great. That'd be great, just as a starting point. 
Yeah. Frank, is there something that that um, you would be open to sharing as far as sponsorship that you ask for for some of the the events that you're involved in? No pressure. Repeat that again. Sorry. Oh no, I was asking Frank if he had oh, um, like a, a yeah. model. Sorry, I was I got pulled into something for a second, but I I, I was I've been trying to think about. Uh, a model for what? Sorry, repeat the question. Oh, so <laughs> sponsorship levels and, and the amount of um, exposure, you know, stuff like if you sponsor $5,000, you'll get um, a booth at the at the event, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, that really varies on what it is, right? Like, so you, it's all, um, it's all, it's all negotiable, <laughs> right? So it's, um, but yeah, I mean, you can, we can, you can come up with like different, different things that are happening at the, the local event in, in Peoria um, that, that could be, I would need to understand what the, what the exact flow is for that and, and then understand like what, what makes sense. Right. So yeah, you can come up with anything, right. So it could be a booth at an event or it could, you know, I always try to reverse engineer what, what a company is looking for um, and, and who you're talking to. Right. So if you're asking a company, asking what their goals are and then try to figure out, how to build that into that program. Um, the selling booths thing is difficult. Um, you know, it doesn't always work and it can be tough because it, it's hard to guarantee if the new, especially with a new event, like the exposure level you're going to get and everything. So, um, you know, I, I have to say with a lot of our events, we've worked kind of trying to figure out what, how's it, how does it, how does it benefit them first instead of, instead of the other way around. And then, and then figure out what how to plug them in. But I, I was actually thinking more about, and that's why I was on mute. I was trying to figure out and talk to my my partner uh, Jen on mute about what what we would need to get. Uh, um, like you were asking that question, I really it's a hard one because it's like how much how much effort time are we talking about? I mean, we could to the point of like we could take over the application and get it out and push it to all of our our networks, and obviously with the push of everyone on the call, help guide that and just take that piece off because that's that's what we do. Um, for other different groups, um, we work with different groups to kind of have, um, I would almost call it like challenges, and this would be like an agrotech challenge. Um, so that is one piece. I just don't know. Um, it's hard for me to to figure out what, like what that would look like. Um, you know, obviously, generally we get compensated for that kind of stuff. We'd be willing to do it for for no compensation if it's, you know, doesn't cost us more to like, you know, start get you know setting up HubSpot drip campaigns and things like that. So. Um, which is stuff that we do for other folks. So, yeah, um, I, I, I completely, and, and I know that um, um, I think the, the primary thing about engaging and, and um, having you as a resource, Frank, is, is yeah. definitely the institutional knowledge and the foundational knowledge yeah. that you come with. Um, and mm -hmm. that as we expand to mm -hmm. having more than one competition or, um, putting together a national competition is yep. where, um, because then by then we will have, have grown to more than one competition is, is, right. is the hope and goal. And, and it's, it seems really silly to bring you in, you know, two years down the line or three years down the line. So you right. know that we've got going on. And, and I also know that you've got a couple of um, contractual obligations that are, that are really, um, first of all, cause they're, they're, lucrative but the other thing is because they take a lot of bandwidth right now so right um, yep so i definitely want to balance that and i also want to balance with kelly um because i know that when village at, um village capital goes and does this thing they're going after big sponsorship um and they work with large corporations um right. campbell's hershey's you know stuff like that so i want to make sure that that um we're not going to step on your toes as far mm -hmm. as who you're going after but at the same time um if they're not going to be involved and they're low-hanging fruit we would love to have them you know take part in this so um I think that part of for for Jake and the and the booth kind of thing or the the convention space, um, the the thing that comes top of mind to me is all the the colleges that have ag um, focuses will be recruiting um, heavily. April's a little late in the game, but it's not to say that that's not um, especially since China's not. 
um, not a, a place to think about these days, that's actually um, an opportunity for for universities. If we can if we can funnel that as a you know here come and see or or incubators and accelerators other than that. So um, so anyway, but we can we can fine tune that. Um, what other questions come to mind? while we're all together. So I wanna, I wanna tackle the things that, you know, that we can talk about only when we're together. The rest of the conversations can be done offline. Yeah, I just real quickly, just from our perspective, I think my thinking was that Tuesday is really just the announcement about the event and then the opening of the applications of being able to direct people to the, the global site to start registering. And then we can determine you know, within a couple weeks uh, after we have some more discussion around sponsorship levels and booths and things like that, we can put another another note out there that then the states can start to distribute to the individual states, to their corporations, colleges, that type of thing, uh, around getting those those other participants. So that's just just real high level. That's kind of what I was thinking. And since we're only looking at doing one competition this year, then this gets spread out um, among our networks across the United States, right? So this is the, the, the one future Agro Challenge USA that we're going to have. We're just housing it in the Midwest. Right. So, so if you have, um, if we know people in Tennessee or wherever that, that they will be able to submit, um, we want to create a bigger buzz um, and not necessarily a huge event. Um, I think, you know, logistically and time wise and all of these factors, I'd like to, for us to think about a more exclusive event that people want to fight to get into and then when we open it up next year to be able to do more than one then there's already a buzz created wow we didn't get a chance to compete we're definitely in for next year kind of thing so um so the buzz is 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 more of the 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 goal in my mind and to do something smaller and do it right um, so that we can go back to the USDA and to go back to all the other players that want to be involved and say, okay. Um, Danny Breer, who couldn't be on the call, um, is with the Henry Ford. And I know um, Hassan knows him and Jake does, but, um, but we're def he's definitely thinking about how youth can be involved since he runs STEMI, which is all about youth invention. So, um, and that's K through 12, but, but there is money in youth, right? There's definitely support and opportunity in that. I don't wanna bring a bunch of very young kids to Greece. That would be a total logistical nightmare, but, um, but I wanna be able to, to, um, to get them excited, right? So um, Hassan, do you have anything that you wanna add? I'm gonna um, and Jake and DJ. I did have another. Oh, there's the sign. Sorry. Hi there. Sorry about that. I was just uh, on mute. Um, no, I think this is. I'm just really excited about this, and I'm probably in the next today's Friday, but I will connect with Danny uh, earlier next week and brainstorm some additional ideas. But there's also. Um, Detroit Eastern Market Partnerships, uh, which I'm part of, which is heavily invested in the agro space, uh, from vendors, from farm uh, to table programs, uh, food incubator and accelerator. So there's some ideas running around that I'll be able to share with the group uh, sometime next week. You know? That sounds great. So Hassan is in Detroit. So um, and the Henry Ford being right there, it's um, it's good. I think um, Jake, you and I probably need to to just start um, planting seeds right before the um, the announcement, like it um, for Startup Champions Network and for 
other organizations that have huge, larger networks to be able to say, hey, we've got, you know, are you involved in ag? We've got something happening, you know, we're really excited about that kind of thing. So if we start, mm -hmm. you know, like dropping breadcrumbs um, and get people excited, that would be a good, a good plan. Yeah, I have uh, actually have a call with a new EV um, of SCN on Monday next week. So make sure she's aware of that. Um, oh, yeah, no, she's, other she's, she's already, because we were thinking okay. about two competitions and Kristen would have definitely been in, involved had we done a North, gotcha. a Northeast, but go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, just one other question for for call up from a, a regional perspective. What, how many how many startups do you typically see participating in the regional events? Do you know is it twenty? Is it thirty? Is it forty that get paired down to the one winner? What's the typical number? So usually, as far as app, I mean, with applications, we usually ask that from all the ones that come in, you select the top ten. Um, and those are the ones that you should have for your competition in that national day because it just gets too tiring to have more than 10 on stage. Um, the way that we've boiled it down on stage is usually the top six do a quick pitch and then the top four go into battle. So the first and second place actually have a battle with each other and that's how they're chosen and the third and fourth also have a battle with each other. Um, and that again is in the manual, but if there's any more that you need to know, if there's any information that's not um, clear for you, I'm happy to clarify that. When you Great. do, Thank you. when you do, I mean, we're not to the level of doing um, a large national competition. What is, um, what do you find for, for a smaller scale competition? What how many finalists should we shoot for? Applications or finalists? Um, well, so I'm, I'm wondering what Frank does on the U.S. side. Yeah. Yep. So we, we narrow thousands down to 100 and then 100 down to um, basically top 15, but ultimately we put five on stage. So we bring a hundred together, but that's a lot. So I, you could even do less than that. You could, you know, at some of our other events that like at South by when we do kind of a one off fast track event, we have between 20 and 30 startups show, you know, kind of pitching and then with a shorter pitch. And then we end up with five that pitch with a longer format. And then sometimes even like she'd mentioned two kind of battle it out. So it can vary, but you, you kind of want to narrow it down. It depends how much time you have and how much attention you have because you get, 30 companies or 100 companies you've got to figure out how to now get all those pitches happening um where they're being you know judged by something somebody um in one time and if you know on a stage it can it can be a little bit um it can be a little dull <laughs> so so you want to like do it that on your program i'm saying i'm adding on i mean it, it's true it depends on the program you're going to have so how many right. hours you yep. actually have this program exactly. i think that's what you first need to identify before you yep. but we usually suggest eight to ten finalists i mean if you want to go with less that's fine but definitely yep. not less than four <laughs> yeah i agree um kelly words of wisdom on your end as far as those national competitions Uh, no, I mean, we, we don't really do, we ourselves don't really do national competitions. We, you know, we pull away from, from pitch competitions specifically, we don't run them, but so I don't have any specific expertise or advice for, for that. Okay. And I know Jake, you've got a, a vision for what you want, what you see as the agenda. So I think it would be helpful to have that added and shared, you know, distributed and, and we can maybe, um, I, you know, we're, I, we were talking about a, a two and a half day event where people arrive um, the night of the 13th and have events going on. But we also want to, because we've got the, the benefit of being able to tour the, um, the USDA space, which is huge. And um, Jake, do you want to just run through the agenda real quick? And, and then we'll, we'll yeah. um, share it with everybody on Slack and in the Google Doc. Yeah, sure. It's um, it is available out in the Google Drive on the budget budget spreadsheet. It's the second tab, but 
Uh, the thinking was on Monday the 13th that it would be kind of a travel day. Um, opening registration around noon until seven um, and then hosting the various corporations and some of the VIPs from the, the five different states in the evening for kind of a reception and dinner. Um, on Tuesday the 14th, keeping the registration and, and the vendor fair um, set up open in the morning, doing an opening ceremony um, and keep kick off around 1230 that potentially be with the governor. Um, and then starting into the pitch sessions between 1.30 and 3, doing a break, and then another set of pitch sessions in the afternoon. And then kind of a, a gen general for everyone networking event uh, in the evening. And then kind of a full day on Wednesday with the uh, breakfast and then a couple more pitch uh, session tracks. And then looking at doing the Ag, Ag Lab tour uh, in the afternoon on Wednesday from like 1.30 to 4.00. And I'm also working on uh, um, Precision Planting, which is owned by Agco, is is here locally as well. Um, they do a lot in the farming space, so they're pretty cool. Pretty cool tour if people wanted a, a different option. Um, and then doing kind of the uh, final pitches then towards the evening over dinner with like a closing keynote um, and the awards and then leaving that vendor fair open until about 9.30. So. Then as I was having the discussions locally, um, we were thinking about, well, what, you know, during those session times when companies are pitching, if not everybody wants to be in all those, what are alternative uh, activities or programming we could have? And I know we had mentioned being able to do some um, like pitch and learn, like a round table session to give people feedback so that they are, you know, these startups are getting value out of this, even if they don't necessarily make it to the top, you know, top four that they can, you know, help hone their pitch a little bit better, uh, get some feedback from peers, even VCs, that type of thing, um, if they're if they're not making it on to the next round. So that's something we can work work through in terms of those um, alternate activities, but we do have the space to do that. So um, if we want to work on some additional programming. Top of mind thoughts? Don't be afraid to say something because you want to say it now before we go down this this track and then you go, oh yeah, I was going to say, wow, maybe we should have done this. So uh, I was going to say, um, I'm going to chime in more next week on it, but I set up some meetings for this next week with uh, National Young Farmers Coalition and then some friends that did TechCrunch, they did an ag-centered uh, event around that. Um, but getting more feedback on other events, just what you guys were talking about earlier too, a lot of these siloed efforts that, you know, the collaborations are the biggest thing. So just taking some advice from them. So I'll have more next week on that. And then as far as uh, storytelling goes, though, I've already started, I'll, I'll talk with you more, Celia, about the uh, proposal and then um, kind of delving into how that transitions into a uh, value add product to market the event, but then also follow up with what goes on in Greece, so kind of that continuing on. Um, and then whoever was talking about doing the graphics or anything like that, um, I have a whole stockpile of photos from around the country of farms and every icon you can imagine to do with it. So please, if you have a request or anything that you need, just uh, shoot that over to me and let me know. That's great, DJ, um, thank you. Thanks, DJ. Hey, DJ, I'll probably be reaching out um, as I put together like some press materials, so. If you don't, I've got your email. Um, I'll probably reach out to you here today. Sounds peachy. Okay, um, I'll put together a contact list so everybody can can um, connect. So it's not. I don't want to be like the hub, right? You guys feel free to connect with each other and talk to each other. Um, it's definitely a team effort. We can't do it without every single one of you. So, um, so we definitely want to do that. But, um, but I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Plus, there's a, a bus thing that I have to get on, and I don't want the bus to leave without me. So, yep, um, I got to jump. So, thank you for pulling this together. And I just sent a note to Jake to you. So, if you need help, let me know how we can help. Great. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot, Frank. Frank. Thanks, Jen. Um, All right, thanks, Bryce. So, thanks, anybody Bobby. else? It's nice meeting you. Huh? All right. Yeah, just everyone is well. Yeah. And um, and then uh, Carla, you and I will um, will sync up sometime later next week. I'm at the foundation, the um, the beginning of the week. So 
Um, so we'll definitely talk and get some of the other logistics. So, um, yeah. so anything that that happens more on a a, a national and and probably national, international, and and probably more of a higher level um, as far as not the event itself. I think if you want to talk to anybody about the event itself, um, Jake is your person because um, he's he's the person on the ground. Storytelling is around DJ um, and Kelly. You know, for Village Capital, definitely the involvement for anybody coming in. Um, we would. We will, of course, share anybody that fits into your challenge to introduce them. Um, but we want to definitely support in that way. And and Hassan, you and I will um, definitely brainstorm about how to get others engaged in a wider realm. Does that sound good? Yep, sounds good. Okay. Um, and if there's anything else you know right away let us know i think um dj and jake working together on some of the materials just the preliminary know that this isn't like the last press release we're going to have but we have to have something so that it can be spread and um and jake i i can't post in the eship page about this because you know that's a that looks really bad if I'm promoting something that I'm involved in, in the thing that I moderate, but you can, Hassan can. Um, so we will spread okay. it out to the ecosystem building community. Um, we'll definitely, Jake, Hassan and I are all part of Startup Champions. We'll share there so that we start getting ecosystem builders involved. But think about what other audience, I think universities are definitely low hanging fruit, especially getting this youth delegation together um, I think there's a real opportunity there, especially because um, the governments are the government is very excited about that, and that's something that we can promote. And heck, all of you could become chaperones and come with us to Greece. Um, I, you know, if we can get that funded, that's like Greece in October. Who doesn't want to do that, right? So. And then maybe what we'll do is get the extension over the Global Entrepreneurship Congress thing. So that takes place the fourth to the sixth. All right. I've done a lot of talking. Everybody else is, you know, thank you. Um, is there thank anything you, else? Yeah, if anyone needs anything from me, feel free to reach out. Um, right. I'm here to answer any questions. Yeah. And if anything is a bad idea, sending up red signals, you know, all of those things, please voice them now, right? Or like, that doesn't sound good to me. Let us know now. I don't want it to be like a surprise. Um, so we all know of this and the pitfalls going in. So, okay. Have a good rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.